Hello Assyrian and your family, I hope you guys are doing great. I want to share some very important dates with you that you need to remember for the month of November. Are you ready for it? The first one, the 8th of November, we have Get Connected. So if you're new to the church and you want to know what is the vision, the mission, the purpose of City on a Hill Church, where can I serve, where do I belong in this church, in this family, then this is for you. Get Connected is amazing on the 8th of November, then also to the third, on the 13th to the 14th of November, we have Destiny Weekend. Yes, that's right, Destiny Weekend. If you want to know what is God's destiny, purpose, plan over your life, this weekend is for you to discover as over your family's life, over you as an individual, you don't want to miss this. And then last but not least, one of our most celebrated Sundays of the year. Are you ready for the 22nd of November? Priest hood sunday we are going to have bruce mcalpine who's going to come and share with us this is such an important sunday for us as a church and you don't want to miss this so here's what you need to do if you want to find out more details about this go to the info desk ask them ask the questions you need to ask and we would love to celebrate with you enjoy it well friends good morning and thank you so much for joining us at city on a hill this morning it is really amazing to have you this morning, Mark continues preaching out of the book of Ruth and all about favor. So I want to really ask you, friends, to open your heart, open your mind, and allow God to speak to you this morning. Friends, uh, for those of you that are keen to give, uh, we have an opportunity, and you will find our banking details either on the screen, or you can go to our website, where you can also find it. So friends, uh, I want to again invite you, if you are in the Clarkstorp area, please join us at the building. We're having an 8 o'clock, a 9.30 and a 5.05 celebration. So come and enjoy the goodness and the Word of God. Amen. Telling you friends, what we saw last week is we saw that God wants to unlock great things in your life. The fact that it's bigger than you think. You think you're part of something small. God's doing far greater things behind the scenes. That's what this whole series is about, is about you and me accessing the more that God's got for us, being part of the bigger picture of the big dreams and the big plans of God, being part of the purposes of God in our generation and beyond our generation. We are now still talking today about a lady called Ruth, that if she chose to stick with her old people and what she knew, we would never have known about her. Wow. So let's pray. Jesus, this morning as we come to your word, we thank you that your word is powerful. We thank you that it's not only about us reading your word, it's about your word penetrating our hearts, penetrating our minds, and expressed in our lives. And so I pray right now that we would have an amazing encounter with you as we spend time in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, friends. And so this is our second part. So our second part of Ruth is this, finding favor. Finding favor. Can you say find favor? I've learned this is that often people think we need to work for favor, but the Bible doesn't teach that you work for favor. The Bible teaches that you find favor. Favor is something you find. Favor is something that, that I think many people, it's there, God's favor is available, but people don't find it. I'll tell you what happened two weeks ago. We had a few men at my house, so we were having breakfast. And Baptist came to me and said, did you find, did you find this thing on your phone? I said, what thing? Friends, I don't know about you, but whenever I type a WhatsApp, right, I type a few words there, and then I miss a word or two, and then I'm like, oh, and then you, have you ever tried to find the place where you, and then you tap the screen, and it's like, ach, nee, this, it's that, this is long, and then it's like 15 minutes later, he's just like, let's just delete everything and start over. Have you ever been there, yeah. right? Then Baptist comes to my house, he says, listen, just press the space bar, and then you move the cursor where everyone. I said, what? You've just changed my life. <laughs> Hello. Now, if you didn't know about it, you can pay me later. I'll take tips. Bad I'll share it. <laughs> but it was always there. I just didn't find it. I needed to find it. Favor works like this. It's there. You just need to. God's favor is available for your marriage. You just need to. God's favor is available for your business. You just need to. God's favor is available even in South Africa, in this country, with this government, with the battles that we're facing. God's favor is available. We need to find it. 
Come on. Uh, Johan, can I get an amen or a woman or a something? Come on. It's like a shortcut, you know, when, 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 you, when you've always taken this one route to work. And then someone tells you, but have you gone that other way? And then you're like, I've never gone that other way. And now you save like five minutes a, a, a day and you're like, I found it. It was always there, but I found it. It's like promises in God's word. they there. You just need to. That's why Thomas was saying, we sit at Jesus' feet. That's how you find the promises of God. That's how you find the truth that liberates and sets you free. Amen. I'm telling you, God's favor has always been a reality. We just need to find the favor. Now, the favor of God is one of the most powerful things that you and a human being can, can encounter. Favor and grace go together. You don't separate favor from grace. In the Bible, they often interchange the words. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense, G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is favor. Favor is grace. Grace and favor work together. Is that all right? And so what I, what I found was, is that I believe that God doesn't only want us to start with favor. He wants us to grow in favor. We see how Ruth comes from this, literally a place of not having favor, not deserving anything, not earning anything, but accessing, finding, enjoying favor. Think back at your life. Think back, I'm going to say to most of the men in the room, when you found that lady you found favor. Hello? Think about, true, true. I hear some men say, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> think about some, some of you, think about it. You got an, a work opportunity. It was favor. Think about finding this church. I'm telling you, this church is a church filled with favor. I'm telling you, friends, living in Clarkson, one person said to me, I thought I came to Clarkson, but God actually brought me to a church. It's finding favor. Hello? Now, we need to grow in favor. Luke chapter 2, verse 52 says this. It says that Jesus Christ, he grew in wisdom and in stature. He grew in favor with God and favor with men. Favor with God and favor with men. Friends, even if Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 100% righteous, 100% holy, one that lacks nothing, he grew in favor with God and with men. You know why? Because he wanted to show us that we need to continually grow in favor with God and with men. Now, people tell me, but Mark, how do you find favor? I'm here to say to you, friends, favor is something that overflows on earth. Favor on earth is an overflow of favor from heaven. Heaven is the first point of call. That's where you find favor, and then it overflows. You first get favor with God, then you have favor with men. If you're seeking favor with men, you're going to have to manipulate, and you're going to have to Make a plan to get favor. But if you want favor with God, if you find favor with God, the overflow is you'll have favor with men. Amen? It's powerful, man. Now let's get into uh, Ruth chapter 2 verse 7. Now before I get there, I want to say this. Can I make this one statement? You, you need to remember this statement. One moment of favor is better than a lifetime of labor. I'm going to say it again. One moment of favor is better than a lifetime of labor. Self-made people tell me, oh, you know, I did it my way. It's Frank Sinatra's great-grandson. I did it my way. I did it. I'm a self-made man. Oh, really? I don't believe there's such a thing as a self-made man. Favor. Favor is what makes all the difference. Verse 7. Now, in verse 7, she said, this is the servant speaking to Boaz. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning till now, except for a rest, a short rest in the shelter. Watch this. The servant is speaking about Ruth, and the servant is saying to Boaz, this lady's amazing, man. She came here, she humbled herself, she asked please, and she's been working the whole day. Watch this. I've learned that most people want favor, but they want to be arrogant. They want favor, but they want to be entitled. Entitlement is one way to reject favor in your life, sir, madam. Entitlement, I see it in our, in, in our uh, I've listed uh, young people that, that they just finished school. Man, they are like, hey, where, I want to drive my Mustang. Where's my Mustang now? Like, I want to live in Woodpecker Creek now. I'm like, yes, no problem, my man. 
But entitlement will bring you nowhere. Humility attracts the favor of God. The Bible says God gives grace in James. James writes, he says, God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. Grace and favor go together. If you're humble, you attract favor. If you're proud, you reject favor. You cannot earn favor, but you can reject it. Many people are doing business and they're going to work and they're at school and they're in relationships and they're struggling to access the favor of God. And they say, oh, it's unfair. No, favor is not fair because you can't earn it. Favor is not fair, but you can reject it. Wow. Verse 9, verse 8 to 9, Ruth chapter 2. Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. I love how he speaks to her. He says, don't go and lean in another field. So he calls Ruth to himself and now he's wanting to speak to her. He says, don't go to another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I've told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever, listen, whenever you are thirsty, go and drink from the waters, water jars the men have filled. Isn't that amazing? This guy comes. He owes her nothing. He's got no obligation towards her. You know that. He's got no obligation. What he does is he brings her in and he says, whoa, I want to tell you, I'm going to show you favor today. I want to tell you that you're going to get some extra special favor. You're going to get extra special provision. You're going to be able to drink some of the water. You're going to get more than enough. I'm going to make sure that you're protected because I've learned this, is that favor is not only provision, but favor is also protection. I'm telling you, friends, I've seen this. Marriages, you don't only need provision for your marriage, you also need protection in your marriage. You don't only need provision for your kids, you also need protection for your kids. You don't only need provision in your business, you also need protection. Protection is powerful. Watch this. It says in Psalm 90, 90, 90 verse 17, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Can you say favor? Oh, let the favor of the Lord God be upon us. Watch this. And establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. One of the saddest things that I've seen in life is people work hard, they sweat, and then everything gets taken away from them. One of the saddest things, I've seen people put in all the effort and get nothing for it. Because their work, the work of their hands is not established. If you want the work of your hands to be established, have the favor of God on you. Ruth comes, she's working. God's establishing the work of her hands because of favor. Not only that, it says in Psalm 5 verse 12, Surely, surely the Lord, surely Lord, sorry, surely Lord, you bless the righteous. Can you say righteous? I believe righteousness attracts blessing and favor. That's why we are righteous in Jesus Christ. That's why he, when he said it is finished, he made us right, right in right standing before God. Now, if you fall from God and you do not have a relationship with Jesus, or maybe you drifted away from God into sin and you've lost your, maybe you might be in legalism or you might be in sin and you're saying, I, my relationship with God is really not where it needs to be. I'm telling you today, you're missing out on the righteousness of God. If you're trusting in yourself, you're missing out on the righteousness of God. And when you miss out on the righteousness of God, you miss out on the blessing of God. Watch this. You surround them with favor. Woo! Woo! I just, I cannot ask you, when you stand in the shower, can you do this when you stand in the shower? Sorry, that's not a nice picture. I don't know. Maybe you guys are, maybe you guys are seeing me in the shower. I, I've learned this. Sorry, I can see you guys are laughing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I shouldn't. That's a bad ex example. Stand in front of the mirror when you've just drink, gotten dressed. Anyway, I'm here to say, listen, friends, favor is a shield. He surrounds us with a shield. His favor is a shield that protects us, Jan. His favor is a shield that changes you. You know what? When you walk to go to work, you're like, listen, I've got the favor of God all over me. When you're dealing with your finances, I've got the favor. I've got a shield. He surrounds me with favor like a shield. A shield surrounds me. Can you give him praise? Shield. He protects us. I love this. Is that favor will also give you an opportunity to take hold of something that no one else will have access to. Boaz says to her, he says, listen, don't go to another field. I want to help you with my field. I want you to come to my field. I want you to get my grain. I want you to drink my water, and I want you to be protected by my people. 
I'll tell you his testimony. 2003, Marie and I, we were going to start a ministry school. And uh, we wanted to have all these students. We wanted to train them. Ronko was in that ministry school. Baptist was in that ministry school. Sean and Chantel and the guys, uh, Gareth was there. We, we wanted to start a ministry school. And the reason why we wanted to start a ministry school is we believed that God wanted to take young people, raise them up for the nations, equip them, empower them with the glory and the grace of God so that they could make a difference, not only in church, but beyond that, in life. And so they were fresh out of school, and we needed a house where they would stay. And so this house that I wanted to buy was, a, was, was like a four-bedroom house, not a bad location, but it had a lot of cracks in it. And so I signed for the house, but there's like, because it was under a certain amount, I, could, I had seven-day cooler period. So I signed the house, and I went to a breakfast the next morning. Now watch the favor of God. Friends, I look back at my life. I'm telling you today, I'm a product of favor. I know myself. I mean, you know my, 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 my second name at school was Mark Mark Finnegar. I know I'm a little bit slow. I, 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 <laughs> I know I'm not, I, I mean, I don't have, like I wasn't set up. I didn't like have like millions in the bank. When, I mean, all of that stuff, you know what I'm saying? I mean, my claim to fame is I've got Jesus and I married the right woman. That's, that's my claim to fame, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm a test in your favor. So I get to this breakfast, and I tell this guy, his name's Andre, he's one of the pastors in the city, and I tell him, hey, we just bought a house for our ministry school. And he says, really? How, how much did you pay for it? And I tell him how much I paid for it. And he says to me, he says, you should have spoken to me, man. I've got a house that I want to sell. I said, oh, man, I'm sorry, man. I already signed for it, but I've got a cool off period. He says, well, I'll show you the house anyway. I've got the keys in my car. He never has the keys in his car. He, ha- he happened to show someone earlier that day he had the keys in his car. He said, let's just follow me and let's go look at the house. I get to the house. Man, it's so big. It's like three of the other houses that I was going to buy. And it's in a much better condition. And it's perfect. Marie and I can live there while the students, we could live in a little cottage there while the students are living there. Ask the students, they just, they, they were noisy and stuff while Marie and I were living there, but at least we didn't have kids. So we, <laughs> and so, so what happened was, he takes me to the house, I look at this place, I'm like, yo, Lord, this is too big. He tells me the price, it's double than what I paid for the other one. I say, sorry, my man, I don't think I can do this, you know, like, he says to me, man, come to my office, I want to help you. I go to his office, he says to me, you know what I'll do? I'll give you a year to get financing for the house. I want to help you to get this house. I said, sure, that's nice. He says, but what I'll do is you rent the house from me, and for the 12 months that you pay rent, every cent that you pay rent, I'll take off the capital amount. Hello? Meaning he's saying, have it for free for for a year. That's what he's saying. And he's saying, I'm going to take it off the capital amount. Then he says to me, you know what? I was going to put new carpets in. I'm like, I don't care about carpets, man. It's all right. It's going to be students. We'll just, we'll walk on the carpet. That's what we're going to do. You know, we're going to pray on the carpet, right? He says, he knocks 5% of the price because of the carpets. 5%. And the rental income was another 20%. I'm like, wow. Come on, let's give, give God praise because it's amazing. So, so I buy that. We, we move into the house. I'm feeling happy, happy, happy. Comes a year. I'm going to the banks. I'm like, hey, we want to finance the place. The bank says, no, you're not earning enough money to finance this place. I'm like, oh, goodness, no. I go to a friend of mine. I say, hey, do you want to buy the house? He says, yeah, for sure. What's a bargain? Now, friends, you must understand, this is 2003. 2004, the property prices just started climbing. I mean, it was... Property prices were climbing with like 100,000 rand a year, average. I mean, you know, the people that were here, you know. Then what happens is, I go to the guy, say, I've got another guy that will buy it from you at the price that I was going to pay. You know, that means you're going to score now the rental income, and you're going to score the carpet money. He says to me, no, I don't want to sell it to anyone else. He says, I don't want to sell it to anyone else. He says, I want to only sell it to you. I said, what? He's like Boaz. Remember Boaz says to her, only stay in my field. I want to help you. Remember that? He says to me, he says, he says you can take as long as you want to get a, uh, financing for this. He says, he says this was his exact words. 
I want to help you to get ahead in life. I mean, come on. I was, I was 22 years old. 22 years old. This guy sets me up with one of the best investments. That investment today, literally, friends, supplements our income with more than 8,000 rand a month. That same, that house. By the grace of God. Amazing. One moment of favor. Better than a lifetime of labor. A few months later, I got the bond. My dad helped me. My dad had to help me. <laughs> My dad helped me. We got it. I'm telling you now, the payment on that thing today is less than a third of what the rental income is. Isn't that amazing? Let's go to verse 10, Ruth chapter 2. It says, At this she bowed down with her face to the ground, and she asked him, Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? Now watch this. This lady is getting something that she knows she doesn't deserve. She's a foreigner. She's an outsider. How about, how about you go to work tomorrow? You're like, hey, Lord, I don't deserve anything. But I'm looking. I'm expecting favor. Not because I deserve it, but because you love me. Because you died on the cross for me. Because your grace is sufficient for me. Hello. She's recognizing. Now watch this, friends. You know what she could have done? If he was nice to her, he could have said, she could have said, yeah. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Come. Oh, yeah, water. Oh, yeah. Listen, and I need some time off as well, please. And while you're at it, I need lunch. I want lunch. She could have done that. I'm being serious. That's what not many people do. God shows you favor, and then you don't recognize the favor. You don't appreciate the favor. You don't, listen, friends, you don't, what you don't recognize, what you don't celebrate, what, you don't, what, you, what you're not willing to honor, you're going to lose She says, why have I found such favor? She recognizes the favor. Listen to what he says, verse 11. Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. How you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you. Can you say repay you? Watch this. Who's going to repay her? Boaz or the Lord? Oh, this is better than what you think. This is bigger than you think. God's favor is not about people giving you stuff. It's about God doing miracles in your life. That's what, that's what the worship was about this morning. It's God doing miracles in your life. Not because people. It's God's miracles. Listen to this. It says, for what you've done, may you be richly rewarded by the Lord. Where do the rewards come from? From the Lord. Hello? Watch this. The God of Israel, under, whom's wing, uh, under whose wings... You have come to take refuge. I love this. Three things. Number one, repayment. Number two, rewards. Number three, protection. I love this. Listen, friends, this is powerful. This lady, she did not, she was not nice to Naomi because she was trying to get Boaz to like her. She did not know there was a person like Boaz. Some people think, you know what? I'm going to give something. I'm going to do something nice so that God can bless me. Just forget about that. That's not how favor works. Favor is not twisting God's arm. Favor is just you just being faithful whenever you get a chance to be faithful. You just love when you get a chance to love. You just care when you get a chance to care. Marie and I, we were, we were, we were eating lacquer vorsis yesterday with our family. And it was, it was gifts from, a, from friends of ours. And I thought, these people just do it out of their hearts. No, no strings attached. Hey, they just want to bless you. Someone gives you, I mean, something nice. Think about it. Just... Just loving, just, just praying through the night, just because God's prompted you to pray, not because you want to get something out of it. Just giving financially because God told you to give, not because you want something out of it. Hello? Think about it. That's what this lady was doing. She was being faithful when no one was watching. She was doing stuff. Friends, you want favor? Just be faithful. Just sit at Jesus' feet every day. Come on, let's give him praise. I love this. I love this. If you want to grow in favor, friends, be faithful, be righteous, be honest. Honest people, just be honest when no one's watching. Just be honest. Just be humble and submitted. It attracts favor. Be thankful. Woo, be thankful. Woo. I want to pause there. Can I stop there? Thankful people attract favor. I can't explain this to you. 
I mean, thankful people, I just want to give them more stuff. And I mean, I'm not even God. But think about it. You know, who knows a thankful person? Okay, thank you. The three people know a thankful person. The rest of you, you're missing out. <laughs> thankful people are so, they attract favor. Like Ruth, what? Look at this. I've got, she attracts favor because she's thankful. She's thankful. When you honor God and you honor people, it attracts rewards. Jesus said, he says, if you honor a prophet, Neil, you get a prophet's reward. If you honor a righteous person because he's a righteous person, you get a righteous person in reward. And who is the one that gives us the reward? God. Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south. Promotion comes from the Lord. I'm telling you today, you might say, but I need that contract or I need that tender or maybe I need to be able to have that breakthrough with this. I need to get that promotion. I'm here to say to you, friends, promotion comes from the Lord. Amen? Come on. I love it. Verse 13 says, Ruth 2, may I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord. Can you say continue? Most people think, oh, if, you know, this is how most people think. If I could just get that promotion, then my life's going to be set. I'm never going to need anything else. If I can just get that increase, man, I'm never going to have any financial problems again in my life. Watch, watch. If I can just get that healing, if I can just get that prophetic word, everything's going to be sorted. I've learned this. God goes from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. Favor has to continue growing in our lives. Come on, give him praise. God wants you to grow in favor. She says, may I continue to find favor. She wants to continually find favor in your sight. You've put me at ease by speaking kindly to me. I want to tell you about this. I've got my little suit jacket on. I love a jacket. My wife knows this about me, that whenever I, I, she asks me, what do you want for your birthday? I want a jacket. I love a jacket. You check me. I mean, it's summer. That's why I've got short sleeve. I like a jacket. People there at home, we love seeing you. I love a jacket. Now, I like wearing a jacket. That's why when I do a, a, a wedding, it was Nikudem's wedding on last, last week. Can we give God thanks for Nikudem and their wedding? Their marriage is amazing. Weddings are amazing. So when I do a wedding, I often put some money in my pocket just for in case, you know, there's like an open bar and I want to buy an apple tizer or a grape tizer or something. You know what I'm saying? Hello? Not, not a double rum and eats. I, I'm, I'm just... Just, just want to buy a grape tie, is that? All right? So then I get there, and sometimes it's an open bar, then you don't have to buy anything. All right? Because the squin bar is looking after everyone, right? <laughs> then I forget. I put some money in my pocket. You want, and then when you put the money in your pocket, you put it there, and then you come home after the wedding, and you take the jacket off, and you put it back in your cupboard. Now, you know what happens, Neil? You put it in your cupboard, two months later, there's a wedding again. And you put the jacket on. And then on the way there, you think, what about drinks? And you look, and you say, whew, <laughs> hey, I found some money, money, money. And you know what I've learned? I've learned this. I've learned. It's like money like you never had. It's like, it's like I never had this money. Have you checked it? It's like, it's like. I hid it away from my kids, from my wife, from everyone. I mean, no one took the money. I mean, this money is like, it's like I hit the jackpot and I don't even believe in gambling. This is the thing. May you continue, watch this, continue to find favor. It was always there. I just had to continue finding it. Hello? Let's go to verse 14. At the mealtime, Boaz said to her, come over here. Have some bread and dip it in wine vinegar. When she sat down with the harvester, she, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted. Can you say all she wanted? This is favor lifestyle. All she wanted. All she wanted. And this, listen, and she had some left over. I love this about God. He's not this just enough God. He's the more than enough God. Favor is not just about just enough. When you spend time in God's Word, Thomas, and you're spending time with Jesus, it's not just about just enough revelation. It's about more than enough. When you're spending time in God's presence, when we're worshiping together as a church, we've been saying, hey, man, let's open up the meeting 
Hey, there's more than enough people. Well, now we need to have more, more celebrations. Space, Mark, make space for more than enough. Believe God for the more than enough. You're a child of God. You walk in the favor of God. You, you don't go to work with, oh, baby, can I just, just have a... No, you want more. Everything you wanted and more. That's favor. That's favor. Come on, can we trust God for that? Can we trust God for more than enough? Amen? I want to prophesy over some people. That it's time to believe again that there's a more than enough. The impossible is possible. Amen? Watch this, verse 15. Now, this is so powerful. Now, I need, I need Neil and Letitia, do you mind coming to the front and in Baptist as well? Letitia is going to be Ruth today. All right. Verse 15 says, as she got up to glean, watch this, she left to glean. Moas gave orders to his men. So, Letitia, can you go and glean there for us? Just there. Glean. <laughs> no, you can, you, can just, you can just stand there. That's clever. That's clever. Yeah. That's amazing. I hope the, the camera can get us. Watch what Boaz does. Boaz comes, and he brings to his men. He's like, hey, guys, come, come. Oh, is he going to be Boaz? Yeah, yeah he looks like a good Boaz, eh? He looks like a good Boaz. Jesus can bless, can bless Ruth through Boaz. I love it. Let's give it up for Boaz. Come on. Boaz, talk to us men. He says, listen, let her gather among the sheaves. Watch that. <laughs> Let her gather among the sheaves. He says, even pull out, watch, watch, watch. Even pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. Watch this. Boaz brings these guys together and he says, guys, I want you to do something nice for her. I want you behind the, behind the, behind the scenes, behind her back, let's get some extra for her. Let's pull out some, put some extras out there for her and look after her. And help her. Come, come, come. Watch this, watch this, watch this. This is the heart of God. This is how favor works. Even when you don't see it, God's working. Even when you don't feel it, He's working. He never stops. He never stops working. I want to ask you, child of God, do you live as if you've got a father that's backing you. You've got a high priest, an advocate in heaven, Jesus Christ, pleading like a Boaz yeah. behind the scenes where you don't see it, you don't know it, you don't feel it. But he's pleading behind the scenes. He's working things behind the scenes. He's working in hearts. He's opening doors. He's closing doors because he wants to protect you. Yeah. He's setting you up so you can take hold of what you need to take hold of. Let's give these guys a hand. Bless you guys. Can I say this? Favor is not fair. Can you say it? Favor is not fair. If it was fair, I could earn it. But it's not fair. I receive it. So three things, just before we close, before we get to the most important part of favor. Three things that I believe we need to grow in. If you want to grow in favor, do you want the three things? Okay, that's all right. Let's go on. No, no. Three things that will help you to grow in favor. Number one, expect favor. I've learned that you only get what you expect. I, I shared this with our church many years ago. We spoke about favor many years ago, and God gave me this powerful revelation about the fact that everything in life that we go through, we need to frame it with favor. Everything in life we go through. Oh, shakes, my wife is pregnant. Let's frame it in favor. How am I going to provide? Let's frame it in favor. Oh, shakes, I need, to, I, I need to take hold of this new job. Let's frame it with favor. Oh, shakes, we've got this... Report from the doctor. Let me frame it with favor. Oh, my bank balance is not looking great. Let's frame it with favor. Let's come close to home. COVID-19. I'm sorry, I'm doing something in the spirit now. Something's got to shift in your heart. Frame the season with favor. Come on. We're going to frame it with favor. No matter what you face, no matter what we go through, frame it with favor. Expect the favor of God. Look for the favor of God. Secondly, recognize the favor of God. I said it earlier. If you can't be thankful for God's favor, you're not going to grow in favor. When you pray for one sick person and they get healed, recognize it. When you trust God for a miracle, recognize it. Murdoch spoke this morning about miracles. 
testify, recognize the miracles of God, the breakthroughs of God. Amen? Thirdly, respond to the favor of God. It's not good enough, friends. You just frame it with favor, you recognize it, but you do nothing about it. Favor, increased favor, calls for increased faith. And faith without works is dead. Faith will unlock obedience. Respond to the favor of God. Amen? Stephen Furtick said the following, and I want to close with this. Favor and the presence of God go together. Thomas didn't know I was going to share this. The presence of God and the favor of God go together. So here's the thing, friends. If you, listen, friends, if you've got God with you, you've got favor. If you've got God's presence in your marriage, you've got favor. If you've got God's presence in your workplace, you've got favor. If you've got God's presence in our church, we've got favor. Stephen Furtick says this. He said, the favor of God is the guarantee of his presence and the provision of his power to accomplish his special purpose in and through my life. It's the guarantee of his presence to accomplish Obviously, and his power to accomplish the very thing that we called to take hold of. In Exodus 33, we see how Moses comes to God and he says, God, you called us to go, but you didn't say who you're going to send with us. God says to him, my presence will go with you. And then Moses says, if your presence doesn't go with us, God, don't take us. And then God says to him, watch this. He says, and if I found favor in your sight, verse 16, Exodus 33, if I found favor in your sight, then show me your glory. If I found favor, God, I want your presence. I want your glory if I found favor. How do I know I found favor? I've got the presence of God. I've got the glory of God in my life. Verse 17, listen to God's promise. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you've asked because I'm pleased with you and I know you by name. Today, God is wanting to pause with you, sir. Child of God, ma'am, he wants to say to you, if you ask me for my favor, If you ask me for my presence, if you ask me for my glory in your life, I'll do the very thing you asked me for. I'll do it. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor. Can you say favor? The Lord bestows favor and honor. Watch this. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Think about Joseph. Joseph comes, he gets thrown into the pit but he's still favored. He gets sold into slavery as a slave of Potiphar's in Potiphar's house, but he's still favored. So everything, the Bible says, because the Lord was with him, God established his work. God gave him amazing favor. God gave him authority. Why? He had the favor of God on him. He had the hand of God. He gets thrown into prison. He's still favored. He he comes and he meets Pharaoh. He's favored. See, no one can take the favor of God from you. Esther, she's just a Jewish young girl. She gets brought into the king's palace. She becomes the queen. Listen to this, friends, because of the favor of God on her life. Daniel, he, gets, he finds himself in exile, and he still becomes highly favored. Amen? Let's stand together. I want to read Psalm 30, verse 5. It says this, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Watch this. God's anger is for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. You know how some people live? They live like this. God's favor is a moment, but for them, his anger is for a lifetime. As you stand here this morning, I want to ask you, will you expect the lifetime favor of God, and thank Him for the moments of anger. Say, Lord, thank You that I could come to the cross. Thank You that I could humble myself before You. The moment, just a moment, I could get free from that moment, and I can live forever. If you're far from God, you do not have a relationship with Jesus, I'm here to say to you that one of the keys, the keys to experiencing the favor of God and not the anger or the wrath of God is to put your hope in Jesus Christ, to put your faith in Jesus Christ. So we're going to respond to God right now. We're going to open our hearts wide. We're going to receive a fresh revelation of favor. Is that all right? Let's pray together. Jesus, I want to thank you that favor is so powerful. I want to thank you that we can grow in favor. 
that we can walk in favor, favor, that we can recognize favor, not because of what we've done, but because of who you are in our lives. Chains break.